Do anyone have that paper you have written the Monday? No, it's not that. I you took it up. No, no, it's like he, he sent it to us somewhere. No, the hard copy you have given. The to hard copy is with you. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, yes. I told you to. See, he has it. You don't like the paper, is it? Switch off the fan. Switch on the fan. No, off. 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 Oh, they get all the cold air. Oh, so they're, they are strategizing it. Fine, let us take one question from this. These put your back to monitors. Guys, we'll take a question on the uh, the previous class concept, and then we'll start the class, the new concept. Okay. Let us see whether you are well versed. Yes. Yeah. Give it back. There is this rod. Stop talking. There is this rod. Okay. The rod mass is capital M and the length is L. Okay. There is another mass, a point mass that is fixed at the end of the rod with mass small m. Got it? You are giving uh, somehow this rod acquires some angular velocity. All right. By the way, the rod is free to rotate about this axis. Okay. Fine. So it can swing like this in a vertical plane. Fine. So you're giving it with some angular velocity so that one end of the rod acquires a velocity v0. Okay. You need to find out what is the value of v0 so that the rod just becomes horizontal. Got it? So the masses are different, right? That's small m. Ah, small m, capital M. Concept of energy, right? W is equal to U2 plus K2 minus U1 plus K1. So the work done is 0. Stop talking. U2 plus K2 will be equal to U1 plus K1 as work done is 0. Is work done 0 or not? Which force will do work? 
Oh, minus mg See, mg is doing work, no doubt about that. But for mg, you are considering potential energy. If you are considering potential energy for a force, you don't need to find the work done for that force. Okay? And there are forces from the hinge, but the point of application doesn't move of the hinge. So the work done by the hinge forces is zero. So between this position and that position, apply this theorem. So the expressions when you not the rod plus small m can be treated as a single rigid body. Assume this line to be zero potential energy. It will be better than. This line is what? U2. U2 is 0, let us say. Okay? Fine. U2 is 0. What about K2? Zero. K2 is also 0. It just goes to that position. Fine. So both U2 and K2 are 0. Now, let's try to write down the kinetic energy of this rod along with this mass. Fine. So you can write down the kinetic energy in different ways. Alright, K1 you can write it as half moment of inertia of the rod about the fixed axis into omega square plus half m into v naught square. So you have written kinetic energy of the rod plus kinetic energy of the mass. You are writing it separately. Okay, and moment of inertia about the fixed axis is how much? ml square by 3. So half m l square by 3. Omega is what? V naught by L. L. Okay, so this is the kinetic energy. Another way to write the kinetic energy is to find the moment of inertia about this fixed axis for the entire rigid body. For the entire rigid body, moment of inertia will be what? ML square by 3 plus small m into L square. So kinetic energy will be half total moment of inertia which is ml square by 3 plus ml square into omega square. This will be the total kinetic energy. Alright? This is K1. What about U1? U potential energy it is better to split. Otherwise you have to find out the center of mass location for the combined system. If you can find out no problem. The potential energy will be M plus capital M into G into height of the center of mass. Or you can split it into two parts. Potential energy of the rod plus potential energy for the small mass. This will be equal to what? Negative of capital MG L by 2. It is down. The center of mass of the rod is down. Okay? And negative of MG L. Any doubt? This is U1, this is K1, U2 and K2 substitute there, you get the answer. Okay? Any doubts? <laughs> okay, I did not know that we have... Can you show the notes uh, what we have done at the end of the last class? We just started the energy, right? Yeah. And we have written kinetic energy about the fixed axis as well as rotation plus translation. Okay. Right. So we have just introduced what is the kinetic energy and potential energy of a rigid body. So we can continue solving problems right now.
All right, so we have learned that kinetic energy of a rigid body is half moment of inertia about the fixed axis into omega square. Fine. Which omega? About which axis? Fixed axis. Fixed one. About the center of mass or the fixed one. Which one? Omega. Omega is. Yeah, it is omega. Omega is same for an entire rigid body. That is why it is called a rigid body. Fine. If omega of one point is different from other point, it will no longer remain a rigid body. It will distort. Okay. So this is the kinetic energy. If you are not able to find the fixed axis, no problem. You can write it like this: half m into v c m square plus half moment of inertia about center of mass into omega square. Two ways you can write the kinetic energy. Both ways you get the same answer for the kinetic energy. All right? Come. Let me sit here somewhere. All the four seats are occupied, though. Okay. And that one. Fine. And potential energy we have already learned is m g into height of the center of mass. Okay. And on top of it, you remember the work power energy chapter. Remember, right? Where we have been using W is equal to U2 plus K2 minus U1 plus K1. Fine. Or you can remember it like this also: that U1 plus K1 plus W is equal to U2 plus K2. So you can do some amount of work to increase the me initial mechanical energy. But if you're doing the negative work, your initial mechanical energy will reduce to U2 plus K2. Fine. So both ways you can remember. Right. So we're going to take few questions now, which will test you on these fundamentals. I think there should not be any confusion. We have done lot of question in work by energy chapter already. Okay. <coughs> now we're going to use work by energy concept for a rigid body. Okay, the methodology is exactly the same. The only difference is the way you write kinetic energy and potential energy. That is the only difference. So keep it simple in your head. It is very easy to complicate. Okay. All right. So we'll take up a simple. Sim we'll take simple scenarios and we'll build on it. There is this rod, chupa jao, mass m and length l. Okay. This is free to rotate about that axis. You have to find out the angular velocity when it has rotated by an angle of theta. It is rotating in a vertical plane. Okay. Vikas is absent. He has some fever or something. Others? Anybody else absent today? Okay. 
इवन हैरिस के is initially and where it is finally okay this is the center of mass how the center of mass is moving like this it reaches here it travels vertically a distance of how much this is l by 2 so this will be sin theta l by 2 sin theta l by 2 sin theta what it So I am going to use work energy theorem between this position and that position. Fine. So step number one: write down W is equal to U two plus K two minus U one plus K one, and then substitute. Work done is zero. Final potential energy is what? Depends what you are taking your initial potential energy. Where should take initial potential energy? Let's take this line as zero potential energy. So my U two U two becomes minus. Sorry, U1 becomes zero. K1 is also zero. It starts from rest. So U2 will be minus of and G L by two sine theta plus kinetic energy will be half. I know there is a fixed axis, so I can directly write half moment of inertia about the fixed axis m l square by three into omega square. This is equal to zero. So from here. I'll get the value of omega. What are you getting omega as? Fiji sine theta by L under root. Under root. Under root. Fiji sine theta by L two L. No, it's three G sine theta by L by L. Yeah. By L. Yeah. Fiji sine theta 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 by L. Yeah. Fiji After time t, how much it will rotate? Then what you will do? You will find angle of rotation after time t. No, no, no. I am asking you. Don't start solving it. I am asking you how you will solve for angle theta after time t. D theta by dt. Yes. Omega is d theta by dt. Yes. Okay. You write omega as d theta by dt. And then bring here one by sine theta, one by root sine theta d theta. You have to integrate now, and that side will be d t. So when you, if you are able to integrate one by root sine theta, you will get the answer. Okay, fine. If I ask you, a just similar kind of question we have done when we learned the torque problem, right? Same problem we have done. We got the angular velocity. Then also calculated angular velocity. Check whether it is the same thing. Using torque, we have calculated. We got alpha and then integrated alpha to get to get omega. We have written alpha as omega d omega by d theta. Did you check? Yes. You got the same thing, right? We calculated omega after theta becomes. 90 right we got alpha as 3g cos theta by 2l we got alpha as 3g cos theta this is what we have got yes or no and then alpha is equal to omega d omega by d theta this will be equal to 3g by 2l Cos theta. So theta you go that theta goes that side. When you integrate, you get omega square by two and three g by two l sine theta. Two and two will be going, and then you get omega as this. So you get the same answer two different ways. Like the way in uh, you, like the way in laws of motion chapter, you get acceleration. From acceleration, you can calculate the velocity. Or applying work energy theorem, also you can get the velocity. Same way here as well. Fine. Now you have to find out what will be the uh, reaction force of the hinge. Did we do that? Yes. 
Okay, so quickly we, uh, I tell you, let's say this is, these are the two reaction forces. Let's say this is Fy and this is Fx. So Fx will be what? Fx will be equal to m omega square L by 2. And Fy will be equal to m alpha into L by 2. Because alpha into L by 2 is the tangential acceleration and omega square L by 2 is radial acceleration. So why L by 2? Why not? Yeah, that's what I asked. Why not? L full L. Center of mass you have to track. Center of mass is at a distance of L by 2. Entire rod behaves as if it is a point mass located at the center of mass. Got it? So, what's the acceleration of the center of mass tangentially? How do you find that? You have alpha? Okay. You have alpha? Right? So, alpha into L by 2 will be the tangential acceleration. It moves in a circle, right? With angular acceleration alpha? Yes. So, alpha into L by 2 is tangential acceleration. We just differentiate omega. I differentiate or you directly have this alpha, no? I just understand why is it L by 2 to the center of mass. You have to see net force is equal to mass and acceleration of center of mass. Yes, sir, but how did we get that? Using torque equation. We have done this. Torque equal to I alpha. Oh, yeah, the, uh, yes. Yeah. Right? The yeah. mg is a force. So mg sin theta is perpendicular component. mg sin theta into L by 2 is I alpha. Yes. You get alpha. Okay. Yeah. okay. Any other doubt? You have done all that, then we learn the torque equation. Is it clear? Okay. Yeah, so you have to balance that. That's what you are saying. Our net acceleration is that. And then you can put the balance of forces. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so do this now. It's in the sphere of mass M and radius R. Okay? Sphere of mass M and radius R. This angle of inclination is theta. From center, the height of the ground is H. Okay? Alright? So it's a yeah. solid sphere, right? Solid. Haan, solid. When, when, when it is not mentioned what is it, you have to assume it is a solid one. When it comes down, we have to find, it, find out the angular velocity. What is the angular velocity omega when it comes down? There is friction sufficient for the pure rolling. Friction is sufficient so that pure rolling happens. Alright? There is no slipping. So the decline plane doesn't shift? You want to shift it? No, 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 not right no. now. Incline plane is at rest. Moment of inertia about the center of mass for a sphere is 
2 by 5 mr square. Friction doing any work? Yes. Yeah. Friction is doing some work. How many say yes? Yeah. Actually, you know, but it's <laughs> Somebody <laughs> asked me doubt in the group, right? Is friction do you yeah. asked? What did I say? Sir, I asked. Yeah, friction what will work? Yeah. In pure rolling case, friction doesn't do any work. Okay? Please write it down in box. If it is pure rolling, there is no slipping between the two surfaces, right? Relatively, they are not moving. So, work done by the friction is zero. But that doesn't mean that friction doesn't apply force. Force is there to create acceleration and angular friction. But that doesn't do any work. What did you do? You got the acceleration. I see. I want you to apply work energy theorem, alright? You can solve it using torque equation also, but I want you to use work energy theorem. I want to see that. Now under root 5 j by Sir, so, 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 if we assume the bottom to be zero potential and potential at the top would be h plus r, right? That's what I took it as. Wait, this from center. Yeah, so the h plus r. No, 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 it's just h to the center. So you only need h cosec there. Yeah, but, but in the end it's r. All right, so almost all of you did not get it. The final potential is not zero. It it's mg h minus r. Yeah. Center of mass is a, a height r above. Yes or no? Okay. So W is equal to U2 plus K2. This is the expression. All right. W is zero. U2 is what? MGR plus K2 is what? K2 is half M V C M square plus half I omega square minus M G H plus zero. Did you get this? And since it is pure rolling, omega is equal to VCM by R. Pure rolling on a fixed surface, that is why. Alright, so when you substitute VCM is equal to omega R, now you can solve it to get the value of omega when it comes down the incline. So if okay. the thing itself is moving, then even we if it's We are going to slipping. do that after we learn angular momentum and momentum. Okay? Because then you have to apply conservation of momentum. So, but in that case, VCM, even if there's no slipping, VCM will be different from omega, right? Yes. 
at the point of contact, the velocity of the object will be equal to the velocity of the surface. Yes. Okay. Both tangential direction as well as radial direction. Guys, focus here. This one. It's a disc. Disc banao bhai. It's a disc mass M and radius R. And this is a horizontal line. which is at a distance of r by 2 below the center. Got it? So if you drop a perpendicular from here on this chord, this distance is r by 2. Getting it? This entire disc can rotate about this horizontal line. Are you getting it? So it is like this. That Suppose this is a disc, it can rotate like this. Are you getting it? It can rotate like this. Okay, I know. So, it is like this. This can rotate about the horizontal axis. Are you getting it? Understood? Are we sound me? Here are this. Fine? So, it can flip over like that. So, when it flips over, how it looks like? It looks like this. Getting it? You have to listen here. Listen, listen. This disc is free to rotate about this axis. You you have nursed it a bit, and it started ro uh, rotating. You have to find out its angular velocity when it has flipped over completely. Understood? So, so it's horizontal, and gravity makes it go. Through. Oh. Okay. Oh, so, so it, it flips. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> So we just need to find angular velocity. Right? So No, it's it's M R square by four plus M R square by four. It's a, it's just, it's, you just yeah. take the, I don't remember the answer, but I do remember this came in J 1998. See, it is supposed, supposed to be a very tricky question, but I'm telling you now. You've got it, you can't be J E in one. Advanced. Yeah, advanced. 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 All right. Somebody is teaching so well. <laughs> I get all the credit. All right. So, focus here. Center of mass was here earlier. Now it has 
gone there from point one to point two. I have to apply the conservation of potential energy, sorry, conservation of mechanical energy between one and two. All right. The same thing. W is equal to U two plus K two minus U one plus K one. You can assume point number two to be zero potential energy. So U two becomes zero. U one will be MGR. Mg. This distance is r by two plus r by two. R. So Mg r. Okay. K one is zero. Whereas K two is half moment of inertia about the fixed axis into omega square. This is your K two. How do you find moment of inertia about this axis? I have to apply parallel axis theorem and perpendicular. Right. So about this axis, I know it is m r square by two. So about this will be m r square by four. So m r square by four is your I C M, which is parallel to that axis. You have to shift it m into d square, which is m into r by two whole square. So this will be equal. Okay, like this. Understood. Fine. Find out. Find out. Find out the total force the axis applies on the disc at this moment when it is at point two. So the what? Total force the axis applies on the disc when the disc is at point two. Towards axis. So here we have to start. You have to use whatever. How much omega comes by the way? Under root 4g by, by, by r. 4g by r. Alpha is equal to. Hmm? So the alpha is equal to. Uh, alpha about that axis is how much? Anybody got alpha? So I got the force radially. Alpha, alpha. First tell me alpha. How much is alpha? It's, isn't it zero? Alpha is zero. Yes. Right. The only force is mg that passes through the axis, touches the axis. So perpendicular distance is zero. Okay. So torque due to mg is zero. So alpha is zero. So there is no tangential acceleration. But is there a radial acceleration? Yeah. Yes. Which direction? Uh, yeah. It, like, yeah. No. It's it's. No. It's uh, it's towards the axis from radius towards the axis. It is like this. <coughs> How much is this acceleration? Omega square? R by four. Omega square R by two. R by two. It's perpendicular. The center is moving in at a radius of R by two. You have to see center's motion only. So that one is two m. So omega square R by two. Are you getting it? All of you. Yes. Stop talking. Stop talking. So there will be a force from the axis in this direction. Let's say that force is n, and there will be a force in downward direction which will be mg. So net force is n minus mg. This should be equal to mass times acceleration, which is omega square r by two. So you get n. Yeah, mg plus two. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Omega square r by 2 is how much? 2 mg. 3 mg. Yeah. So the m omega, omega square r by 2 is how much I am asking? 
2G. 2MG? So this is 3MG. So the axis applies a force of 3MG at this moment. Clear? Okay. Shall I proceed? Thank you. Write down angular momentum. We discussed impulse in which chapter? Work Collisions came in work by energy, right? So angular momentum and angular impulse both will do together. Okay. Okay. You remember linear momentum? What is linear momentum? Margin to velocity is the uh, quantity. Okay, it is a mathematical expression for linear momentum. What it is? Momentum is what? Force is effort. Amount of motion. Amount of motion is linear momentum. Okay. What is? What do you think angular momentum is? Amount of angular. Yeah, amount of load. <laughs> amount of <laughs> angular motion. Linear momentum is amount of linear motion. And angular momentum is amount of angular motion. Simple. Alright? So, if if an object is going in a straight line, does it have any angular momentum? No. Does it have or not? No? Okay, consider this scenario. I have asked you so many trick questions. Every time I ask something like, oh, this might be something. Alright, so here is Param, right in the, on the cliff, <laughs> right? This is Ruchir trying to save Param. Thank you. So which one? Master. So Param first checks what is the depth of this by dropping a ball. He's trying to see how far it is. Now, when Param is seeing it from here, he is looking at straight like that, but Ruchi doesn't. Act, Ruchi was not actually caring for Param. He was actually caring for ball. So he is looking at the. <laughs> so he is looking at the uh, ball which he has dropped. So every time he looks at it, he has to turn his head. Right. So is there an angular velocity for the ball for the Ruchi? But not for the param. Yes or no? So, Ruchir will say that it has angular momentum as well as linear momentum. Param will say no. Fine. So, just like torque, even angular momentum depends on about which axis you are looking at it. Fine. Now, we have to quantify it. All right. So quantification should be in such a way that uh, if if the distance, if the perpendicular distance, let us say uh, this is the perpendicular distance, and let's say this is the velocity. Okay. If this perpendicular distance becomes zero, the angular momentum should become zero. zero. <laughs> yes or no? And if this velocity increases, the angular momentum also increases. The the theta changes quickly. Right. So, the angular momentum is basically perpendicular distance into mass times velocity. Alright? We are not getting too much of detail into it. We are directly writing the expression. This is the angular momentum of a point object. Fine? Please write down in bracket for the point of mass. The perpendicular distance of the axis. Yes. 
from wherever you want to, whenever somebody asks you to find a torque, what you should ask back about which axis? So whenever I'm asking you find the angular momentum, you should ask me back about which axis or point you're asking the angular momentum. Simple. Fine. So angular momentum about an axis which is perpendicular distance r from what? From the line of velocity is r perpendicular into m into v. So just like torque, even angular momentum can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. Right now it is in which direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise? It's clockwise. Clockwise. So it is, the angle is increasing like this. So it is trying to rotate like that. So it is clockwise. Okay. In a vector notation form, angular momentum is written as r cross p. p is a linear momentum. Fine. Any doubts? This is the angular momentum of the point mass. Let us now try to find out the angular momentum of a rigid body. This is very clear, right? Okay. By the way, one more thing. Angular momentum is magnitude of angular momentum is r perpendicular mass into velocity. Magnitude of velocity. So dl by dt is what r perpendicular is let's say constant. This will be m into dv by dt. Magnitude of velocity will change only because of the tangential acceleration. So this will be r perpendicular into mass into tangential acceleration. Yes or no? So mass into tangential acceleration is what? Tangential force. R perpendicular into tangential force is what? It's a torque. It is torque. Fine. So rate at which the angular momentum changes for a point mass is equal to torque about that axis. So, so it? if you have like that case that we had before, mm -hmm. you just had something like let's say I had something moving with uh, fixed velocity mm -hmm. about some axis, then it, there will be a change in angular momentum. Huh. So there will be a torque on it huh. across that axis. Yes. But there is no external force on it. How can you say there is no external force? So like I, I just have some line. I, huh. I, I have an axis like this. You have some object going like this. Yes. So this is the perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is fixed? No, no, so it, it, it's, a, it's a axis in the z dimension. And this, this is like this, no? This is your axis. No, sir. Like it, it's not in the same dimension. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Sir. This is your axis. Yes. Okay? Yeah. This is a line of velocity. Yeah. Alright? Your perpendicular distance is not changing your linear momentum is also not changing. So your angular momentum is also constant. It is not changing. So there is no torque. Okay? Perpendicular distance is fixed, no? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. So angular momentum is there, but it is constant. All right, please write down. Wait, sir. If I'm standing somewhere, I look at someone in front of me kick a football, mm. I have to turn my head to see the football go. Mm. So it has angular momentum. But there's no external force after he kicks it, right? Yeah, no external force. Angular momentum, it is like momentum can be there if velocity of object is there. But force will be there only when momentum changes. Something like that. Okay? Angular momentum can be there. But only when angular momentum changes, you can claim that there is a torque. Fine? Should change with time. So if R changes, then huh? if R changes because the, like someone's going in a then also it, there can be momentum. There can be sorry torque. Okay. If perpendicular distance itself changes, it means well, uh, you know it is not going in a straight line. Okay. Write down for a rigid body. We are trying to find the angular momentum.
two cases will consider like always fixed axis and rotation plus translation okay so if the entire rigid body is moving with the same velocity it is not rotating it is as good as a point mass is moving and you can consider entire rigid body as if it is a point mass located at the center of mass so you can that case we already considered okay now we are considering case number 1 fixed axis ये रहा तुम्हारा रिजिट बॉडी दिस इज योर रिजिट बॉडी फाइन एंड दिस रिजिट बॉडी देखो बकवास करना बंद करो फोकस करो यहां पे दिस इज रिजिट बॉडी व्हिच कैन रोटेट अबाउट दिस फिक्स्ड एक्सिस ऑलराइट ठीक है भाई आई वांट टू फाइंड आउट द द एंगुलर मोमेंटम ऑफ द एंटायर रिजिट बॉडी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस एक्सिस फाइन so i am giving you hints you derive yourself just like we have derived the kinetic energy of a rigid body about a fixed axis same way please do that let's say this is point mass m1 at a distance at a perpendicular distance r1 away and angular velocity is omega this m2 at a perpendicular distance r2 away now start doing it try doing it your way Anybody? Say so that in part. Ah, I omega. Into I omega. Into R C I. I omega. I about the fixed axis into omega. How many have got that? Two, three, four. All right. Let us do this. The velocity of m one in tangential direction will be how much? This velocity will be omega into r1, right? ठीक है भाई? So the uh, so the angular momentum of point mass m1 is r1 into m1 omega r1. This will come out to be m1 r1 square omega. Similarly, L2 will come out to be m2 r2 square omega, like that. Okay. So if you add it up, you get total angular momentum. And can I ask? Chetan, Chetanya, what do you want to do? Can we take a sit there? No, no. 
So that is why I am putting you there, na? No? So if you talk next, then what will I? No, 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 then something extra should be there, right? Then what you will do? You still talk. You will sit here. Yeah. Without. Okay? Fine. How, what kind of punishment you get in school? Get out of the class. We don't. Huh? Yeah, they actually don't give us punishment. Is he? What? No punishment. They will shout at us and then that's all. <laughs> My teacher used to hit me. <laughs> no punishments. <laughs> <laughs> That's so... You will not have any stories to tell. Anyways. How should I punish? So then you can hit the... I'll be in a jail. <laughs> that I will not do. To innovate. Embarrass. Being sarcastic, then what? Shouting to the routine thing. Then what else? Stand on the chair with wheels on it. That's just hitting me the worst Okay? Or stand here and what you are talking, explain to everyone. Like if there is some joke you are cracking, you are smiling, come here and let everyone smile. Tell everyone what you are talking. Something like that. Okay? Fine, so if you add up all the angular momentum, you get the total angular momentum of a rigid body. Fine. And when you talk about the total angular momentum of a rigid body, you use capital L for it. So capital L is summation of Mi Ri square times omega. Right? Omega is constant, so comes out. This will be equal to I about fixed axis into omega. This is the angular momentum about the fixed axis. It's coming out so simply. Just like kinetic energy came out simply for the fixed axis as half i about the fixed axis into omega square, angular momentum also comes out very nicely like that. Right? If you differentiate it, what do you get? I f into I alpha, which is equal to? Dot. Dot. Getting it? Okay. Do you remember uh, force is equal to rate at which linear momentum changes F is equal to dp by dt? That is more basic or F is equal to m into a? It's, it's, it's dp by dt. dp by dt, right? Even mass can change, there will be a force. V dm by dt is also force. Okay. Similarly here, torque is also equal to omega di by dt. Okay, it is not just I into d omega by dt, it can be omega into di by dt also. Getting it? So this is case number one, fixed axis. Now we are trying to derive the, uh, for the translational axis, alright? Ignore that. Stop talking. So, angular momentum in this case will be equal to, please write down, I cm into omega plus R center of mass cross m into vcm. Ah, this is the total angular momentum, fine. This is about which axis? This is, suppose this is the rigid body. It's a rigid body going with VCM like this and let's say angular velocity is omega. I am trying to find out angular momentum of the entire rigid body 
with respect to this point which is such that this vector is your RCM vector. Getting it? Which one? RCM is a position vector of the center of mass with respect to a point about which you are finding the angular momentum. Okay. Usually application of this will not be there. Okay. And even if it is there, you can always say that angular momentum with respect to center of mass. This will be how much? Angular momentum with respect to center of mass is how much? RCM becomes what? Zero. Position vector of center of mass with respect to itself is zero. So moment angular momentum about center of mass is always no matter what the rigid body is doing is ICM omega. Okay? And sometimes center of mass axis is your fixed axis also. Yeah. Okay? Right? Any doubts? No doubts. There is a full mathematical derivation of this also. We are not getting into that. That is, that is of no use. Yeah. So, when so the ball is spinning uh, about the z-axis, if we have, we just take ICM over there. Yes. And it is a vector quantity, alright? It's a vector quantity. All right. Next topic, please write down. See, we are soon, we, we are about to finish this chapter's theory. Okay, then we will solve only numericals. We are towards the end of the theory of this chapter. Okay, write down angular impulse. So, I know that torque is equal to rate at which angular momentum changes for a rigid body. Fine. It is very similar to force equals to rate at which the linear momentum changes for a point mass. These equations are similar. Fine. So torque dt integral is equal to integral of dl which is equal to change in angular momentum. Similarly here this is what we have already learned. This left hand side is what? This one? Impulse. 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 Linear impulse denoted by what letter? J. J. So J vector is equal to change of linear momentum. Okay. Similarly, the angular impulse there is no letter as such assigned for angular impulse. Okay, so it is. You can. Oh, that's what. Integral of torque dt is your angular impulse. This is your angular impulse. This is equal to change in the angular momentum. Okay, and how do you get angular impulse? There should be torque for a very short span of time. Okay? Any doubts here? No doubt, then we can take a question on this because this is a little vague, this concept. Any doubts? Okay. You have a rod like this, okay, you are giving an impulse from here, this is the impulse J, impulse is given, you need to find out uh, velocity of center of mass and omega, the rod was stationary on the horizontal surface, mass M and length L. Uniform rod.
Can I use impulse is equal to rate of change of linear momentum over here? So you have Sorry, not rate of change of linear momentum over here. Change of linear momentum plus angular momentum. So because it can translate and rotate. What you have learned? Everything is valid, but for the center of mass. Okay. What do you have learned with respect to linear impulse and everything? Everything is valid with respect to center of mass. So you can say that J is equal to change of linear momentum, which is m into V C m minus zero. V C m is what? J by m. Wait, sir, but isn't J equal to m V C m plus i omega? No. Getting it? You derived it, right? J is equal to change of linear momentum. If it is a rigid body, for the center of mass. Simple. Okay? Now, we have to also apply the angular impulse is equal to change of the angular momentum. Right? Now, is there a fixed axis? No. No fixed axis. Right? Alright? So, what no, it is not fixed. It is placed on the horizontal surface and impulse J is given at the end. It is not fixed. Fine. But angular impulse is there. About which point angular impulse is there? Is angular impulse is there with respect to this? No. About that? Yes. About everywhere else there is angular impulse. But if you write about any random point, writing angular momentum becomes difficult. It will be ICM omega plus RCM into MVCM, right? But if you write angular impulse with respect to center of mass, it will be simply equal to ICM omega, yes or no? Right? So I will calculate angular momentum with respect to center of mass. How much that will be? It will be this divided by... It will be simply linear impulse into L by 2. How it comes? J is what? Integral of F dt, right? And uh, the angular impulse is integral of tau dt. Tau is what? F into L by 2. This is equal to L by 2 integral F dt, which is L by 2 into J. Same thing. Okay? Clear? So, J into L by 2 is equal to the angular momentum change with respect to center of mass axis. So, this will be what? M L square by 12 into omega. So, you get omega also here. What do you get? Six. Six. Uh, six J by ML. Are you guys comfortable with this concept? Okay. So find out uh, the point which is at rest immediately after impulse is given. No, no, no. That, that. Find out location of a point which is at rest immediately after impulse is given. Okay. And if you are getting the answer immediately, it is wrong. Do something, write it down. No, 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 no. that then might move back. It is not that end. I think it's... Why would it be more than one
So what's the condition for there being a point at rest and there being no points at rest? Net velocity is zero for the point at rest. Velocity is zero, right, for an object with point which is at rest. So it's not necessary that there will be a point at rest here. But there is. So it's one by six from One by six from? Right hand side or left hand side? Right. Who is the right? Right of center. What do you do? Crop. Stand up. You. Me. Ah, sit there. So, I don't think I have any other key. No, I actually didn't. Oh, what? I didn't think you were. Every criminal say that. I haven't done it. All right, listen here. So angular velocity is omega like this. VCM is how? VCM is like that. So if you take a point over here, which is at a distance of, let's say D, what will be its total velocity? Omega into D like this. This is omega D plus VCM. Yes or no? This is the total velocity. So no point can be at rest over here because the angular component and the linear component they are adding up. Over here though, it will be omega into let's say distance of y. So there is omega y and there will be vcm. So total velocity will be vcm minus omega y. Okay. So you have to find out a point where vcm minus omega y becomes 0. So y will be what? Vcm by omega. Karo Vcm by omega. You get L by 6. So a point which is L by 6 on the left hand side will be at rest immediately after collision. No, collision the impulse. By the way, impulse comes from collision. Getting it? This is slightly tricky concept but uh, it requires little bit of problem practice and then you're fine with not a lot of varieties will be there with angular impulse. So you can just solve a couple of numericals and you're fine. <clears throat> Alright, so this is the angular impulse. Now write down conservation of angular momentum. Just like conservation of linear momentum, there is something called conservation of angular momentum. statement. If net torque, if the net external torque, sorry, if net external torque on net external torque on a system of particles and rigid body, if net external torque on a system is zero, the angular momentum of the system will be conserved. The angular momentum of the system will be conserved. Fine. So if we add up all the angular momentums, it will not change if net torque is zero. Fine. So you have to do what? If you have to apply the conservation of angular momentum, you have to find an axis about which net torque is zero. Okay, and then about that axis, initial angular momentum will be equal to final angular momentum. Getting it? Right? So, basically the total angular momentum of entire system, let's say it has two rigid bodies and two point masses. So this is the total angular momentum. Okay, so if you differentiate it, you will get dl by dt 
it will be equal to torque on 1 plus torque on 2 okay plus torque this like that fine there will be internal torques also and like the way you remember we have done internal torque also get cancelled away fine so if you add all the torques of the system you will get net external torque external torque is equal to rate at which angular momentum changes about that axis. Fine. And if external torque is zero, rate of change of net angular momentum about that axis is zero. So sum of the angular momentum before will be equal to the angular momentum afterwards. Got it? Simple derivation, the way we have done for the linear momentum. Any doubt? Now let's discuss couple of scenarios where the angular momentum uh, is there in our day to day life. Okay. Uh, you've seen, uh, Ajay, have you ever like spread your hands like that and rotated? Um, I did, the, yeah. So do that. No, no, so like I, I read this thing in sixth grade or something. And then it said that if you take two really big textbooks and go on a swivel chair and you start spinning and then you pull it together then you spin faster. Yes. I did that. Yeah. Have you ever done like spinning with your hands open like this and while spinning you, you do like that, your angular velocity increases? Because Anyone I into dancing? <laughs> rotate up there, na? Everybody rotates. So if you have to increase the angular velocity, you decrease the moment of inertia. Which dance? I don't know. Are you, I know. Which dance? Bollywood? Yes. Randomly, like, got glasses and all. In classical and chakras, you take your hands inside. Once you start spinning. So, yeah, see, all the dance, 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 50% dance is spinning only about the fixed axis. And salsa, have you seen? Every, I mean, 90% of the time, the girl is rotating. I mean, so, but that's translation plus. I mean, yeah, but most of the time it will be the guy will be like this and the girl is spinning like that. Okay, fine. So we'll dance it done. Those spins have been seen. She like they pass. Chuck the girl at your top and then she goes to some other girl. What? Chuck? No, so like the pros doing salsa. And pros are different. Like I am talking about you doing salsa. So guys, you are going to be like this. In other words, like they do something and the girl goes spinning to some other guy. Oh, yeah. The top. Oh, while spinning, she goes. It's too much. <laughs> and see, if you have not done this, go home and do it. Not a lot of space here. If space would have been there, if I ask everyone to do one by one. Shri <laughs> Shri can do it. What? You can do it. Yeah, it is. Come here, we can give you some textbooks. <laughs> Why you are telling him to do? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> I, I can't because I don't have a spinning chair. Spinning chair ni chie, to khada ho ke kar rotate up now. Khada ho ke, who knows whether I'm putting the same amount of force there. There's but no integrity one, right? of the... He'll laugh. <laughs> who cares about physics then? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, listen here. Another example is, have you seen in Olympics, someone jumps from the top and goes in the swimming pool? Diving. diving. It's called diving. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when the person is jumping from the top, his body is completely stretched like that. And in between, folds him, himself or herself. When he jumps, he he or she has very little angular velocity. He, he was rotating like this slowly. And as soon as the person folds himself, what happens is that ICM decreases because all the mass comes near to the axis. So sum of MR square becomes very less. So, moment of inertia decreases. But angular momentum is what? I into omega. If I decrease, omega has to increase because angular momentum has to be constant. Right? So because of that, when he or she folds herself, angular velocity increases, and then again when someone is about to touch the water, God knows how they find out they are about to touch the water, they again stretch themselves. Okay? Okay? 
ट्राई मत करना कभी तो फोड़ लेकर तो पानी में चला एंड आई आई हॉर्ड मेनी स्टोरीज वेर नॉट मेनी कपल ऑफ स्टोरीज दैट समवन जंप्ड एंड फॉल ऑन द स्टमक द वाटर वेरी हार्ड्स सरफेस टेंशन विल नॉट लेट यू गो इन इनसाइड वेरी इजीली क्या हुआ यू टेलिंग योर सॉरी Abiram, no, no stories to share. Nothing. Ah, uh, so they, you know, once uh, the Russian spacecraft was there, and inside it there were astronauts. They, at that point in time, they have that disc which rotates. You know, have you seen the big disc? Oh, sir, is is, is there is there this middle axis theorem thing in which it just flips over? <laughs> so there's, there's there's this other uh, really cool thing. It's called the middle axis theorem, in which there was this Russian guy. So he had this T screw. Let me complete, na? Okay. Middle axis theorem kaha se aaya? Middle axis theorem I'm not teaching. Okay. Listen here. So what I was saying was these Russians were fond of some music. So they have uh, they they went to space and started that gramophone, and the disc was rotating. This has a some angular momentum. Initial angular momentum of the spaceship was zero. When the disc rotates, it generates some angular momentum. So the spaceship slightly will rotate because net angular momentum initially was zero. Finally, should also be zero. So if this rotates like this, spaceship should rotate in opposite direction. Okay. So there they found out conservation of angular momentum properly. Right. So even if Even if the spaceship rotates by 0.001 degrees, it will you will go somewhere else. Okay, if you have to go to moon, you will land up in Mars because you are traveling extremely far distances, right? And uh, there are so many examples of angular momentum. Angular momentum is in fact more generic than the linear momentum itself. Fine. Right? So let's take couple of numericals on the conservation of angular momentum. Is there any doubt on angular momentum conservation? Sure. <coughs> Stop talking. It's a cross. Two rods are welded. The mass of the rods M and the length of the rods L. Okay. <clears throat> At the end, there are guns. <coughs> and guns have bullets inside. Fine. So they fire simultaneously. बुलेट्स मास इज स्मॉल एम ऑल द बुलेट्स मास इज स्मॉल एम विच इज वेरी लेस कंपेर टू कैपिटल एम So basically, before firing and after firing, the rod mass doesn't change. So shouldn't the bottom one be towards the atmosphere? No. He just didn't want. I don't want it to be like God ne bola hai kya kitna hi aise rehna chahiye. I put it like this so that you make silly errors, right? So now you have to find out the angular velocity of entire system immediately after bullet is fired. The bullet's velocity of firing is v. All the bullets are fired with velocity v. <coughs> Can I use conservation of angular momentum? Yes. Can I use? Yes. There is no net external. Yeah. About which axis can I use? About this axis? About the fixed axis itself? Right. All the Axis force as well as mg force are applied passing through this axis itself. So net torque about axis is zero. 
so before the bullet was fired, whatever was the angular momentum will be equal to the angular momentum after the bullet is fired. Not do it. L is like not uh. What is the initial angular momentum of the system? Zero. 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 It should be equal to final angular momentum. Add up all the angular momentums of the particles, which are bullets, and the rods. Equal that to zero. Done. Angular momentum of a bullet is how much? M into V into L by two. L by two. These two bullets angular momentum are in same direction, same direction, what about that? Opposite. So total angular momentum of the bullets will be M V L by 2, three bullets in the same direction minus M V into L by 2. This is the total angular momentum of the bullet. Yes or no? Okay. Plus angular momentum of the rigid body. How many rigid bodies are there? Two. Okay. So ICM, which is <coughs> M L square by twelve omega. Both the omegas of the rod will be same because they are welded as a single rigid body. So omega of entire rigid body becomes same. This will add up to zero. Final angular momentum is equal to initial angular momentum. Okay. This came in J1 2014 or. So in that, was it this way or that? It was, yeah, this way. We're <laughs> doing a lot better than this. Got it? Any doubts? Anything? Any so concerns? if you wanted to find the, the net momentum of this system, then you'll have to add the translational also. What do you mean by that? Like even this setup will move forwards because both no, of these... No, fixed axis. External force is there. You can't apply conjunction of momentum. External torque is not there. External force is there. Okay. Axis is applying force, no? Yes. But torque because of that force is zero. So, but like let's say this, this axis was not fixed. 
So if you start moving forward, right? So like the question is, if I put that and fired it the other way, then both ways the change in momentum will be the same, right? Which? So like. Oh, then it will not rotate. If this is like that, then the sum of the linear momentum is zero. Yes. Yeah, so so it will not be more move. angular. Huh. But then right now it will move. It will have some VCS. Yes. As well as omega. Yeah. Ajah, this. Find out if suppose x is not fixed. If suppose x is not fixed, find out VCM in this case, VCM and omega. Remember, I can use conservation of linear momentum, whether it is a point mass or a rigid body, if net external force is zero. Do that. Conserve linear momentum? Yes. No external force. Can I conserve angular momentum? No. Yes. Can I conserve angular momentum? Is there a net external force? No. Mg is there. Mg force is there, but about that axis, the torque because of Mg is zero. So about center of mass axis, I can always conserve the angular momentum. Okay. In fact, torque because of Mg is never about that axis, whichever axis you take, okay? Torque because of mg is trying to rotate like this, sorry, it is trying to rotate like that. So horizontally, the torque is there because of mg, not in this direction. So you can literally use any axis, but it is always better to apply conservation of angular momentum about the center of mass axis or about the fixed axis. Your expressions will be simpler. Done? VCM you got? So net angular momentum, sorry, net linear momentum about the x-axis should be zero because initially it was zero. So about the x-axis, you have 2m into v minus of that plus total mass of the rod 2m into vx is equal to zero. This you all of you got? Yes. So these two bullets are going in the negative x direction. So for that, the linear momentum is minus of 2mv. Plus, let's say that Vx is the velocity of center of mass along x-axis. Plus, total mass m plus m, two rods are there, 2m into Vx is equal to zero. So this will give you Vx. So Vx is what? Vx is m by capital M times V. Vy will be what? You can see that along the y direction, the momentum of this bullet cancels away from that. So, momentum bullet is 0 plus momentum of the rod equal to 0. So, Vy is 0. Okay? So, it will only move in the x direction with Vx. Fine? But won't it move in a circle? Why circle? If, if you constantly yeah. shoot bullets. Oh, if you constantly right. shoot bullets. No, it will not move in a circle. Why? Yeah, sir, because um, the horizontal rod will begin to rotate. But then, with respect to this point, it is moving in a circle. Otherwise, it is a weird 
path. It goes forward as well as rotate. No, no, sir. But 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 if this can also move, then the then then those things itself will shift. So then it will start to do that. Right? Not circular motion. Curved motion, you can say. So it will spend the same amount of time firing this way at each angle. So it will be a circle. Vx is this. So entire structure is moving forward as well as rotating with that omega which we have found earlier. Got it? Yeah. So which is doing circular motion, which point? So that's only at this point, and once it moves a little bit, now it will go in this direction. Correct. So it will, what will happen is, it will move a little forward, and this will happen. Yeah. That's all. But it is not a circle, right? So but if your tangential uh, velocity is the same, and your uh, angle... I know what you're saying. Yeah. But you should also understand what I am trying to say. With respect to the frame, these are doing the circular motion. But if you are on the ground, you will not see the frame doing circular motion. And anyways, in the rigid body, one point is always moving in a circle with respect to any other point. That, that is a generic statement. But if you talk about specific scenario here, it is not a circular motion exactly. All right? But it will be some sort of weird curve. Which point you are talking about? First, no, you so the, the, the center. Central mass. Central mass goes straight. No circle. Central mass velocity is Vx. Central mass doesn't rotate. Okay? Central mass will follow this path. It doesn't have Vy. So, what will be Vy component once it's come here? Because now it's no, no, no. Vy is zero. Always. Vx is this. Always. While the entire structure is moving forward, the structure is rotating. Mm -hmm. So, so once it's why, why would by 45 is? degrees, so won't the height of the center from the ground be like L by 2 sin? Oh, you have not understood the problem. It is the horizontal. On the desk, it is kept. And desk, on the desk, it will slide forward. Okay, any other doubt? I don't know why you are and conservation of angular momentum along the y axis. That's only at this instant. That's only if you choose one bullet per gun. At only at this instant. So at any instant, the sum of the angle, sum of the uh, let's say momentum along y axis will be zero. Yes or no? Yes. Because there is no force between any instant later on and any instant now. Okay. So. It will be always zero. Vy comes out to be zero. Initially and always. I am considering this is after time t, whichever time you consider, and this zero is at t equal to zero. So Vy is zero at any point in time, and Vx is this at any point in time. So the frame will move forward like this and rotate. Center of mass will go in a straight line. Okay? But with respect to center of mass, everything is moving in a circle. Any other doubt? Omega will come out to be same which you got earlier. Okay. Next question. It's a rod of mass M and length L. Okay. There is a bullet that comes from here. A bullet of small m comes from this side. It it comes hits the uh, this rod comes out from the other side. Should I simplify this or it is okay? No, it's fine. Simplification will be bullet doesn't come out. It gets embedded inside. So it's... Okay, okay. Bullet becomes a part of the rod. It doesn't come out. Alright? It got embedded inside the bullet. Embedded inside the rod of mass m and length l. Okay? okay? This this rod along with the bullet swings by an angle of theta max. 
it gets on by an angle theta only. You need to find the velocity of the bullet. So where 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 does it get? Ha, huh, sorry. Where does this is L by four. L by five color. So it's small and insignificant in comparison to capital M. No. If it was, then it wouldn't move. No. No, no it will move. It will still move. Velocity could be high. Anyways, do it now. Just one question. Can I use conservation of energy between this point and that point? Yes. Yeah. No. Right. There's a collision. Loss of energy will happen. No, no sir, but, no, but one, once it's collided from uh, that Once it collided, after that, this point to that point you can use, but not between this point and that point. Because because of the collision, some energy will be lost. It is an inelastic collision, right? use conservation of linear momentum just before and after collision. Yes. I cannot use because there is a force generated at the hinge. So you just find I net. What I can use? I can use conservation of linear momentum or not? No. no because there is an excess force from this. What I can use then? Conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum I can use about which axis? Fixed axis. About this axis. Reason? There is no torque about that. Just before and after collision you can play. is not going to be done. All of you clear, right? I will use conservation of angular momentum to find the angular velocity just after the collision. And from that point onwards, I use conservation of energy.
이렇게라고 칠까요? 
Okay. So guess what? The chapter is over. And now I can give you the mixed question. Multiple concepts together. See, whenever you solve problem, you some uh, you know almost every time if you solve properly, you feel that oh this concept was not done, or this little thing was not told. Okay, so like that there can be n different things, and these small small things are your own learning when you solve problems. Okay, do not rely only on the theory which is taught in a class. I spent around a month teaching this chapter still. There are a lot of small, small, little, little things which you will understand when you solve problems. Okay? And it's not that we are not solving problems. We are solving problems, but then uh, the size of a chapter is as big as combining entire kinematics, 1D, 2D, laws of motion and Bapa energy. All these four chapters together, the size of that is the size of this single chapter. So we can't do each and every variety of the problem in the class, even if we spend one month like what we have done. But then it is up to you to practice them. All right, let's start. Uh, we'll start with the simple ones and then go to the complicated ones rather than directly jumping into it. So this, there is this rod of mass capital M and length L. Ball up. Sir, can we have a break? <laughs> After this. Is break time has come? Yes. Six thirty is a break time. So six fifteen that's six. Six is a break time. So six is the chapter is done. Is the official break time? No, there's no. It's just the like half. Yes. This. The chapter will be done after we are done with this. So like now so the good chapter, chapter is break. done. Like you're going to so we just finish. Yeah, it's fine. Take, it. we'll take ten minutes break. Okay. Ah, so 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 uh, then we will take much bigger break. I know. Go and take ten minutes break and come back. Okay, and don't make noise because there is a class going on. Okay. Slowly. Okay.